So as expected, now that Lorenzo is out of prison, he's taken control over the Tardis by having everybody change their positions under his leadership. Drew is someone who he wants to take over the business, Diana can go back to school, and with Kane being the plug, he told him he wants an introduction to the Connect. And when and if this happens, Lorenzo will have Kane playing his position that he's always played, the street soldier. But it's going to be difficult for Kane to let go of this power that he's gained. Because once you get a taste of this power and position as the plug, you don't want to relinquish it. As we all saw from Kane telling Lorenzo that he's the connect now. But Mecha's game plan has changed. He wants to meet Lorenzo, but what's his game? And does he really want to meet Lorenzo? Would he really give up his identity? I do think there's more to this showdown between Lorenzo and Mecha, which will impact Kane, Monet, Lorenzo and Zeke, all in different ways. So we're going to dive really deep today and look at all the details from how Zeke could be caught in the middle of all of this, because Lorenzo, he doesn't give a shit about Zeke. Relax, okay, Lorenzo don't give a fuck about Zeke or anybody else. He only cares about making his comeback. And Zeke is a secret that still needs to be revealed. So I'll come back to this once we've laid down the foundation, as usual. Now, ever since the first episode, we've been watching Mecha move and really move smooth. He's been making his chess moves on Monet and the Tohadas, but on the basis that Lorenzo is in prison and not coming out anytime soon. We saw him telling Kane that he's heard of Lorenzo, but never met him, and I do believe this because he left around 24 years ago, and Monet and Lorenzo, they've been married for 22 years. So I do think Monet got with Lorenzo after Mecha left, so they may not have crossed paths, even though they have Big Guap in common. Now, we've been watching it working Kane and finding out all bits of information about all of his family, from his brothers, Lorenzo, and even to his cousin, Zeke, and really exploiting their weaknesses when he made the move with the $1 million to pay for Davis McLean. Now, we also learn Mecca, he's ex-military, and he's someone who did his due diligence checks on everyone, so I'm sure he knows exactly who Lorenzo was, what he's done in the past, why he was inside, and how long he's been inside for. So this was the perfect moment to strike, and you could say, at the halfway point, Mecha has all of his chess pieces in the right positions, from Monet to Kane. Timing is everything with Mecha. He introduced himself to Monet at the perfect time. He arrived in the scene at New York, stepping into this power vacuum, knowing that there was a vacant supplier position available. He's kept his identity hidden, and he's introduced himself to Monet only as Dante Spears. But he's introduced himself to Kane as Mecha. He's played to Monet, or as he likes to call her, Nene Stewart. He's played to her weaknesses of wanting out of the game, and Monet's been left all confused by Dante reappearing in her life after 24 years. And Monet really did think she had it all planned, but that was when Lorenzo was inside. Him being released has complicated things in her mind, and she's all over the place, especially because he's the man who she had a relationship with before Lorenzo, and their main connection being Zeke, their son. And Mecca was pushing Monet to meet Zeke, but with Lorenzo now being back home, it would have been difficult to do this. And of course, Lorenzo was someone who was always going to want to meet the Connect because he's controlling and he's the head of the Tarda family. And when Kane told Mecca, he never wanted to meet Lorenzo at first. And that's because even though he was out of prison, his chess moves surrounding Monet and Zeke still remained in place. And he thought he had Monet wrapped around his finger. And the whole thing about Mecca's character and persona is he remains invisible. He remains basically a ghost. So nobody can identify Dante Spears as Mecca, apart from a very few people, and he wants to keep it this way. But what changed this was, this moment that Monet had with her family, them sitting around the table, having dinner together, laughing and joking about their past, and she saw the look on Drew, she saw the look on Diana, and even Kane offered his hand to dance with Monet. And this is the moment that Monet thought, this is her family, not this fantasy life that she was living with Dante Spears, and what he was offering her. So this is what happened when she realised, and this is the last time we see each other. You stay away from Zeke. And you stay away from me. It's over. And this is when Mecca went from staying invisible and not meeting Lorenzo to then deciding that he wants to see him because Monet walked away from everything, even his meeting with Zeke. So Mecca changing his mind has had an impact on a lot of people, but mainly Monet, Lorenzo, Kane, Zeke, and maybe Drew as well. So let's start with Kane. Now, after initially telling Kane that he didn't want to meet his pops, he then sent him a text to tell him that he's changed his mind and to set up the meet between him and Lorenzo, a text which pissed Kane off because he finally got to the position which he believes he should be playing as the plug and he even made his feelings clear to Lorenzo. As far as you're concerned, I am the connect. And this was fueled because of how close Lorenzo was playing Drew. But the thing is for Kane, if he now sets up the meet between Lorenzo and Mecca, Kane gets demoted and Drew gets a promotion. So is it in Kane's best interest to introduce Lorenzo to Mecca? I don't think so. But does Kane have a choice? Again, I don't think so. 
because the main man who's on the other side, who's Mecha, he wants to meet Lorenzo, and he's someone who always gets what he wants. Because let's not forget, he's been putting fear into Kane about what happens if someone disobeys him and goes against direct orders. Kane saw out first hand, him choking Nuff and him ordering the chef to kill him as well. So you can say Kane will fear what Mecha will do, so I don't think he has a choice. So this might push Kane into working with Monet even more, like we saw in episode 6. But what's Mecha's game in wanting to meet Lorenzo? Mecha's game is to get to Monet and get to Zeke. If he meets Lorenzo, then he can dictate and really control not just Kane, but he can keep a close eye on Drew because we all know how much Lorenzo wants Drew to step up and meet the connect with him. Of course, Mecha may not know the plans that Lorenzo has for Drew, but he would definitely take advantage of it. So Mecha can really start to gain control and a foothold over the Tohadas, to the point where it leaves Monet with a decision to make. Because if this happens, she's gonna be on edge, as if Mecha hasn't already messed with her mind, he's about to mess with it even more. But with Monet coming back to some reality, with the way she saw her family, and with her ending things with Dante, Mecha will know he's lost some control over Monet, and this is where he can reassert some control again. So this is the impact that he could have on Monet. But what about Lorenzo? What about when these two are face to face for the first time? Firstly, it's gonna be like looking in a mirror for both of them, because Monet certainly has a type. But Lorenzo has shown us he's someone who can read people very well. Monet thought he didn't know about Drew and his weakness, but he knew straight away with the look that Drew gave to Ev. He also noticed how when he said, I love you to Monet, look how flustered she looked and confused, and she didn't say it back. Lorenzo definitely knows more than he's letting on, and so does Diana, because of Monet's disappearing acts, and she even questioned her about her not wanting Lorenzo to come home. And both Diana and Drew also revealed Monet's exit strategy, which didn't involve Lorenzo. So he definitely knows more than what Monet thinks he does, and eventually this is gonna turn into utter chaos, eventually with a war between Lorenzo and Mecha. And just a quick one before we move on to Zeke, what about someone else portraying themselves as Mecha? Here's where it could possibly get interesting. Do we really think Mecha would reveal his true identity? Eventually it will be revealed of course, but could we see him sending the chef to pose as the boss perhaps? It really would seem believable, because there are so many power fans who still believe that the chef is actually the connect anyway, which I don't think is the case, I do believe Mecha is the boss, and the chef is just one of Mecha's assassins, and players that he has close by. So that's just another take on this whole situation with Mecha, telling Kane that he's ready to meet his pops. But coming round to this whole situation with Zeke, Zeke is the key, and a few things that were made clear in episode 6 was that Mecha wants to meet his son, but Lorenzo, he doesn't give a shit about Zeke, and in fact, we knew before when Zeke was in trouble, because Lorenzo didn't let Monet remortgage the house for him, and he told her to use the money in the safe, knowing full well that the money in the safe was used to pay for Davis McLean for his release. Zeke isn't Lorenzo's son, he's Mecca's, and when he finds out this secret, this is the game changing moment, because I don't think he's gonna have any issues in offing Zeke, it just depends when and how he finds out, and who knows, he may even be playing Monet, he may already know because he is good at reading people, so it really is just a matter of time. So the word I would use for this situation and the Tohadas is chaos. You can see the Tohada split coming, despite Monet's best efforts to save her family, the damage has already been done, and Mecha and Lorenzo is a war that's just brewing. So drop all your comments down below and let me know your thoughts on Mecha wanting to meet Lorenzo, the impact that it would have on Kane, Monet, Lorenzo and Zeke. So drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section and of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already, then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 2 Ghost and Power Universe related. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.